Rishi Malhotra, you appeared for one of the convicts in the Supreme Court in the Bil Bilkis Bano case. Did you all suppress facts? The fact was there was a 1992 policy for remission which was replaced by a further policy of the same Gujarat government in 2013 that made it clear rape convicts will not get remission. But facts were hidden from the Supreme Court. We can question whether the Supreme Court should have done more to find out the reality on the ground in May 2022. But the bottom line is the convicts who appeared in the court appeared to act in tandem with the Gujarat government in hiding facts from the Supreme Court. Rajdeep, well, let me begin with this, that we have highest regard of the judgment pronounced by the Supreme Court. But the irony is that I really fail to understand, I've seen the entire judgment in the evening, where is the fraud, so-called, I would say, quote-unquote, fraud played by any of the parties before the Supreme Court. As my friend also suggested, that the Gujarat government took a plea that the appropriate government has to be state of Maharashtra, rightly negated by the Supreme Court, according to us. And Supreme Court said categorically, no, no, it has to be Gujarat government and it has to be 1992 policy which has to be applied. If my friend and Bilkis was so much aggrieved, she filed a review petition before the Supreme Court. Forget states should not have filed or states should have filed a review. Bilkis filed a review against this judgment of May 2022. That review was rejected. She who could have filed a curiosity before the Supreme Court, which goes before a larger bench of five judges, she never chose to do so. Instead of what? What she does? She files a rate petition challenging a Supreme Court judgment in a rate petition. Now, this is absolutely not maintainable. As my friends say that a rate against the High Court judgment is not maintainable. So, therefore, rate against the Supreme Court judgment per se is also not maintainable. But irony is that there's a complete legal policy because Supreme Court has sat over a legal a judgment, it may be right, it may be wrong, it may be totally erroneous, but a remedy lies somewhere else, not a rate petition challenging a Supreme Court judgment itself. Point number one. Sir, Point we are two. getting, we are getting mired in, no, sir, sir, one minute. Sir, yeah, go ahead. Please go ahead. My point is that I really fail to understand that where was the occasion for the Supreme Court in today's judgment to say that the May 22 judgment was vitiated by fraud played upon the court. There was no fraud played absolutely. Both the orders of the High Court were placed before the Supreme Court in the red petition. One pertaining to Gujarat High Court, which says that no, you go to Maharashtra, and Bombay High Court order of some other co convict, which says that you go to Gujarat for remission purpose. Therefore, a writ was filed in Supreme Court that for which government is the appropriate authority to grant remission in this case. So in case the Supreme Court passed an order in May 22 saying that it has to be Gujarat government for which a remedy was taken by Bilkis to file a review which got rightly dismissed. I really wonder where is the question of fraud being played and where is the question of rate being filed against the Supreme Court judgment itself. I'll this tell you, I'll, I'll tell you just a minute. I, I, okay, just a minute. You know, we are, we will get mired in technicalities, but let's give the hard facts. The hard facts is that the manner in which the remission took place is where the questions are being raised, Pramila Nesargi. Because what happens, the Gujarat government quickly sets up a 10-member committee. The committee includes two BJP sitting MLAs. It includes three other members also who are associated with the BJP. All of them come together and before the 2022 Gujarat elections choose to grant remission. And that is where questions are being raised. There is the question of whether the court, Supreme Court, was given the full legal facts of the case. But there is also the question of way, the way this played out politically. And then when they are granted remission, guess what? And I'll play those pictures in a moment. They are all these convicts, convicts in a rape and murder where 14 people were, uh, 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 were uh, raped and there was murder. They are being garlanded. In a gang rape and in a case of, of murder, you've got the convicts being garlanded by the Vishwa Hindu Parishad officials. So naturally the question arises whether all this was settled in some way. And guess what? The Union Home Ministry had concurred in the remission order. Absolutely not doubted that. And what's wrong if they were garlanded after 15 years? Uh, yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, no, no. Uh, the, the fact is, I'll, uh, Mr. Malhotra, I'll Mr. come back to you. Is the first, yes, I... Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Ms. Nesargi. 
Like, you see, the question is who is accountable? Please go ahead. The main question. Who is accountable? It is the court, it is the court which directed the Gujarat court appointing a committee and go ahead. Who is behind it? If only the Supreme Court had said the Gujarat court had no jurisdiction, it is only the Maharashtra court which has the jurisdiction, it should have been decided. There is a conflict of judgments by the Bombay High Court and the Gujarat High Court. When the matter goes to the Supreme Court, who has to decide? The, you see, ignorance of law is no excuse. Be it the Supreme Court judge or any other judge. The, maybe it is Gujarat High Court or Bombay High Court or Supreme Court. Basically, the highest court of the law is the Supreme Court. Supreme Court, it should have said this is the law. They are not blind sitting just judges. Just cannot hear what the other side says. They must apply their law, they must apply their mind and decide what is the law that has to be laid. Because under Article 141, it becomes the law of the country. Ma'am, please so tell me you are not... Ma'am, you are, you are both a lawyer. Ma'am, just a minute. Supreme Court. Pramila Nesargi, Pramila Nesargi ji, you, Pramila Nesargi ji, you are both a lawyer and you have been a politician. The question arises, look at the manner in which the remission is granted. As I said, the moment... The Supreme Court gives yeah, the Gujarat yeah, government the yeah, right to look at remission and committee is immediately set up. See, that includes only, thing. that is dominated see, by BJP thing. sitting see, MPs, we are, MLAs rather. Are, please, don't, don't bring the party in the uh, arguments. It is not the party. Whoever may be the member, he may be a member of BJP or he may be a member of EHP or maybe any other member. Who constituted? At whose instance the committee was constituted? Supreme Court could have taken notice. Yes, yeah, look here. Miss Nesargi, when committee. you have convicts who are choose. raped, who are, who, are, who are guilty Please. of rape and murder being I garlanded by the VHP, See, uh, yeah. when you Why have a sitting BJP Why MLA who is part Why of the committee calling it there, that the this is a they were very the sanskari people, they are very cultured See, people. What's the message that went out? Today the court has actually acted against what they believe was a misuse of your remission power. A no, remission no, is supposed it. to be done with no. due consideration. That was missing in this case. Yes. Instead, it was seen to be a due political act. Now, you can argue whether okay. it's an act of fraud, but it was clearly seen to be a politically partisan act. I, I, I don't say that. Is, is it, has anybody challenged the constitution of the committee? Was it be, before the Gujarat High Court or before the Maharashtra High Court or before the Supreme Court? When everyone kept quiet. And when after the remission, you are taking action. I agree with you. The manner in which the remission was done, and they don't deserve. The rapist can never get the remission. That is my personal opinion. I can't. I can't stand with them. See the victory. Now, today's judgment, we have a victory not for Bilkis Banu, but it is for the women of this country. Women of this country, we don't tolerate any rape, and much less any less punishment. They deserve the punishment and they should not have been given the remission. That is okay. regarding the process. But we are concerned with the law. Law of the land. That is where I am concerned. The Supreme Court blindly right. passed the judgment in 22. It was wrong. So hold them responsible. Hold them responsible. And they, are account they must be made accountable. That you can't simply quite. No, no, right. Supreme Court did. 